Well, good morning. I'm Pastor John. It's great to see you all here this morning. To our online family, we know a lot of you can't come at this point in time, but we miss you. We're praying for you, and we're always excited when we see you guys walk back in the door. So this morning, what we're going to do is I'm just going to pray here a scripture. Uh, this is when David, he was in a tough time in his life, and it's something he wrote. He said, let my passion for life be restored, tasting joy in every breakthrough you bring to me. So let's pray that this morning. Lord, you're good, and we ask, Father, that our passion for life, for whatever reason, wherever we're at right now, we get together in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your light there is no rival that could ever stand against your mind you've always been with us every battle you've already won oh we've already won there is
like a covenant of old. Your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon with mercy. Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise. 
even when you were singing the last song and you know I can't live without you and your thought is I just want to be with you and I want to check out of this world God has more for you God has more for you you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living so reach out and grab a hold of that Suicide is not from the Lord, so we just break that off in Jesus' name. If you need to reach out to someone, to our online hosts, we have people who can talk you through that as well. Please, if you need prayer, get that. You do not have to deal with that. There is goodness for God for you now. So we just break off the spirit of heaviness in Jesus' name. God, you are the burden bearer, so we turn that off over to you and we look to you for freedom. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for what you're doing. God, break off heaviness and give us a spirit of worship and release. In Jesus' name. It's all
such a sweet presence in the room right now. And Christina said something, let's not miss this moment, this now moment. She said, there's an exchange that's happening. We're giving him our garment of heaviness for praise. And so I'm gonna ask you to do something today. I'm gonna ask you to lift your hands as high as you can. And I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes and imagine the Lord giving you a new garment today. The old clothes are gone, but there's a new garment today. We're gonna sing that one more time. Open the door because he is about to do something today. Today is breakthrough Sunday. And he wants to break into this place. He wants to break into your lives. So let's sing that one more time. Sunday. And if you're watching us online, joining us online, we want you to tell somebody or tell yourself it is Breakthrough Sunday. It is a good day. Amen. Who agrees it is a good day? It's a good day. And so um, this morning, I'm just, I've been pumped and just so excited to share with each of you what the Lord has really just been downloading and depositing into me um, on the subject of fear. And I really believe that the Lord is going to do something today in each and every one of us those that are here and those that are joining us online, whether you're at your kitchen table, whether you're um, in the dining room, the living room, you're at work here, the Lord has something specifically planned just for you. Amen. So I wanted to talk this morning about how to have fear crushing faith. That's what I want to talk about today. And um, for the last several weeks, actually through this year, we've been talking about leadership. And um, Pastor Dave always says that leaders is not about having a title or a position. It's about having influence. And so we all have the opportunity to lead. We all have the opportunity to influence. And so it's important how we respond and we react to fear because all of us have experienced fear. And so it's important to know that what leads us will determine how we lead others. What leads us determines how we will lead others. And so I have this um, quick story. My daughter, several years ago when she was um, young, we were invited to a pool party. And so we, we go to the pool party and, um, okay, I'll just be honest. I don't know how to swim. Don't judge me. Now, I go to the pool, I go to the beach, but I don't know how to swim. And so uh, because of that, Kirsten didn't know how to swim either at a young age. So we're at this pool party and um, one of Kirsten's friends who had invited her, her, her swim instructor was there. 
And so we had introduced them and we're talking to them. And so Kirsten's on the side of the pool and he tells her to jump in, right? And Kirsten goes, no, I'm scared, you know? Um, and so he keeps on telling her, just jump in, okay? And she doesn't. By the third time he asked her to jump in and Kirsten said no, he said this to her. He said, well, while you're still trying to decide if you're going to jump or not, I'm going to go over here to these little kids who are not scared to, right? And he went away. Now, I'm going to tell you, let's just be honest. The mama inside of me was like, oh, how can he talk to my baby like that, <laughs> right? And I looked at Kirsten, and Kirsten was, was standing there on the edge of the pool, and she looked at me, and she said, should I do it? I'll be honest. I said, I don't know. <laughs> and she faced the fear. She jumped. And when she got done, she got in, she swam. Well, she wasn't swimming. She was doing something. But she had jumped in the pool, and she went to him right away, and she said, I did it. She jumped. She faced that fear of possibly drowning. She faced the fear of possibly looking like a fool because everybody else could swim. But she jumped. And from that day on, his name was Mr. Mike. And we love Mr. Mike. He told Kirsten, I want you to come back for swimming lessons. And Kirsten then got swimming lessons and became proficient in swimming. But what she did was she jumped. And so I believe today that God is telling us that he wants us to jump. He doesn't want us to be paralyzed. He doesn't want us to be stuck, but he wants us to jump. And so let's talk about what is fear. So fear, the definition um, in Webster's Dictionary says, it's an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. It's an anxious concern. And so what fear's job and purpose is, is to actually paralyze you. It's to stop you from growing. It's to stop you from moving. It's to stop you from progressing. I think it's extremely important that we know what we're dealing with. And fear can take on different forms for many of us. Um, fear may have started when we were young. Maybe there was an experience that we went through and it caused fear. Low self-esteem can actually cause fear. Words that were spoken over us when we were young could actually cause fear. And the root of it, the devil's plan, it's a tactic from the enemy to give you an illusion of something that could happen. It's not even real. It's an illusion of danger. It's not even for certain, but it's a seed that he plants and that he hopes that we will nurture and grow it. He doesn't even have to nurture and grow it. He just plants the seed. And then we feed it by talking about it. We feed it by participating and allowing it to be part of our lives. So we have to remember it is a tactic from the enemy to keep us paralyzed, to keep us stuck. So we all face fear. None of us in this room, none of us online, wherever you are, are exempt from facing fear. We all will experience fear, but I believe that there is a big difference between experiencing fear and being fearful. I'm going to say that one more time. There's a difference between experiencing fear, being faced with fear, and being fearful, being full of fear. What are some of the things that we've been fearful of? I can go through a massive list. I'll start with some of mine, and you can agree with me if you've been in the same place. Maybe fearful that you won't succeed. How about fearful that you won't be able to pay your bills? How about fearful of an illness or a situation that you're faced with and the doctor has given you a diagnosis and you don't know what the end is going to look like, so you're filled with fear? I said earlier the fear of, uh, of not succeeding. What about the fear of succeeding? Sometimes that in itself can be scary. How about the fear of your past? 
Sometimes as believers, when we come into this, this new walk and the Lord changes our walk, he changes our demeanor and it's amazing, but we don't want people to know about our past and we're fearful if they know about our past, they'll look at us differently. So for some of us, it's an entanglement because we're fearful of past decisions or past sins that we've committed. Fearful, shame. Some of us right now in the, in the life that we're living in, the society that we're living in, the fear of the unknown, what is next? And that can be very scary because some of us like to have control. Does anyone like to have control? Or just a little bit, right? And so when things are uncertain, right, and it doesn't fit into our perfect plan, and I'm going to be honest, even as Christians, right, we may get anxiety and we may get stress from that. And then what can that do? What does that do to us? That anxiousness and that fear impacts us in different ways. It can impact us mentally and it can also impact us physically. From as mild as a stomach ache to a full-blown anxiety attack. Fear can grip us in such a way that it actually halts and stops us in our tracks. But God. But God. One of the biggest lies that the enemy would tell us is this. God doesn't care about you. He's not concerned about you. Have you ever walked through a situation and let's be honest with yourself. Have you ever walked through a situation and you said, I don't feel God near. I don't feel like he cares. And here's the worst thing. You see other people getting blessed and you're like, God, my address is. What about me? I have been there. I have jumped up and down. What about what about me? God, I'm faithful. I give. I give my tithes. I give my time. God. And you know what he said to me? He said, Lakita, I'm in every situation. I'm not just in your good days. I'm in your bad days. I'm in your horrible days. It is the enemy who will lie and say, he doesn't care. It's the enemy who will say, he's not with you. You're all alone. But we have to take the truth, the word of God. That's what we hold on to. So that's his, his biggest lie. So we have to remember that. And we have to look at what are the tactics that the enemy tries to bring to us so we know how to fight back. We don't have to accept everything we hear. We don't. We, there's more power in us. There's more power in you than you know. We are meant to conquer the enemy. I love this um, quote. I said earlier, sometimes the fear of being successful or stepping out or, or you're fear, feeling paralyzed. This quote I love. When I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of talent left and could say, I used everything you gave me. That quote was from Chadwick Boseman, who recently passed away of colon cancer and continued to act in several movies during his life without letting people know. So he walked through a series of battles, but he said, I want to give everything that God gave me. I want to give that back. What if we all lived life that way? That every day is about what you've given me, every talent, every ability you've given me, I'm going to use it. Every minute of the day, being intentional. But we can only do that if we choose not to be stuck. We can only do that if we choose to face fear in the face and tell it where it needs to go. Which is straight back to hell. 
It does not belong to us. It's not something that you have to carry. It's not something that belongs to you. It is something, it's a choice that you get to choose. You get to choose and say, am I going to be faith-filled or am I going to be fear-filled? We all get that choice. So the scripture that I wanted to talk to you guys about today is Psalms 23. So for some of you, like, oh, that's a familiar passage. Any of you, was it the first scriptures that you learned? It was the first, my, in the summer when I was little, I used to go to my Uncle Billy and my Aunt Ruth's house, and this is the text we learned. We learned Psalms 23. But you know, one of the things that I love about God's word is when it's breathing and it's living. So you can look at it today, the same scripture, and tomorrow God gives you a new revelation. And so I want that to happen for you guys today, and I really believe that it will. Psalms 23. This is the first verse and I'm reading from the Passion Translation. It says this, the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I will always have more than enough. When I was studying this verse, this first verse, it impacted me so much. I went through every translation. I looked at the original text. I looked at the original words and this is what it interprets. He is my guide, and he will not lead me into failure. He is your guide, and he will not lead you into failure. This is why we can trust him completely, because this is his word. He is not a man that he should lie. We can believe him. He is trustworthy. He's honest. He's not going to lie to us. So this, if, if you even just get one thing out of today, I want you to know that, that he is guiding you and he will not guide you into failure. So if you're scared and you feel like if I jump, which I won't because I would fall from here, you know, unless the Lord guided me to do that, I, I would do that. But He's guiding you, but he's not guiding you to failure. He's guiding you to success. So don't feel like, oh my goodness, I don't know where he's taking me. And it's okay if you don't know the specifics, but you know this, it's going to be a successful place. It's not going to be a place of failure. It's not going to be a place of despair. He will lead you into a good place. Verse 2 says, he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. Verse 3, that's where he restores and revives my life. He opens up before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, Here it is. Lord, even when your paths take me through the valley of deepest darkness, listen to that. Even when your paths, remember I said he's leading you, takes me through the valley of deepest darkness. So let me tell you about shepherds. Shepherds would lead their sheep through deep, dark ravines. Okay? And there would be life-threatening situations, risk all the way through. There were enemies, right, other animals that wanted to attack them, but the shepherd's guide was to provide and be that guide. So it says, even though your path takes me through the valley of the deepest darkness, here, is, here it is. Fear will never conquer me for you already have. Fear will not conquer you because God has already conquered it. The benefits of being a believer in in Christ, the benefits, it's not just that we get eternal life and we get to go to heaven. I mean, that is great, right? That's amazing. But the other thing is we get to have victory here. Victory and victory celebrations don't start when we make it to heaven. It's here. He wants us to live in victory, and he's given us that. So he says this, the author says, you remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I will never be lonely 
for you are near. Again, it really goes to that lie that the enemy says that you're all alone, that no one cares. The word of God says something opposite. So in this verse, it's talking about walking through. Remember I said earlier, it's important that we don't get stuck. You have to continue to walk. God will provide the direction. He will lead and he will guide you, but he needs your feet. He needs you to move. He will provide you with emotional stability. He will. We pray for physical health, but we also need to be praying for mental health as well. Because that's where the enemy tries to go. He tries to go in our mind and he wants to camp out right there. He wants to sit there, right? As my friend Cynthia would say, sometimes the enemy's living in our mind rent free, right? He needs to be evicted. Yeah. But we are allowing and giving him space to do that. But no more. Verse 5 says, you become a delicious feast even when my enemies dare to fight you will have, you have a live enemy. But you anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. <laughs> you give me all I can drink of until my heart overflows. So here's the question that he asked in verse six. So why should I fear the future? So if God is all of that, why should I fear the future? For your goodness and your love pursues me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be with you forever. God chases us down. His love pursues us. So how can we have this? So you say, well, Lakita, that's the text in the scripture, and that was David, but you don't know about the situations that I'm faced with now. Well, we're going to talk about that. There are certain things that I believe, three principles that I think that are really good, that has helped me, that's helped me walk through some really, really tough battles in my life. And I'm going to share those with you today. And I believe that they can help you as well. Um, I heard a preacher say this, Dr. Zena Pierre. She said, you cannot overcome what you do not confront. I'll say it again. You cannot overcome what you won't confront. So we're going to confront them today. The first one is, you have to think right. You're going to need to write these down because you're going to need to remember them. The first thing is you need to think right. This is your belief system. Okay, now, I'm going to mess with you a little bit. Here we go. This is not about positive thinking. This is about powerful thinking. There's a difference. There's lots of books out there that will tell you how to think positive. There's lots of things you can do and you can say things and repeat this over and over again. There's audios that you can listen to. I'm, I'm not slamming any of that. It's positive thinking. What I'm talking about, though, is powerful thinking. And the reason why it's powerful is because we have the Holy Spirit backing the words of what you're saying. That's why it's different, right? I can say something over and over again, oh, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, right? right? But that's not my power behind it. But when I use the word of God in the scripture, and when he says that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, it's not coming from my power. It's coming from the power of the Holy Spirit. It's coming from the God who created, of all, who created all of heaven and earth and all of creation. His word has power. It's not positive thinking. It's powerful thinking. That's why it's so important to be, to be a believer and to come into alignment with Christ. And if you don't know him today, I urge you to get a relationship with Jesus. God sacrificed his son so that we could be in right standing. And then his son laid down his life. You know, we say lay down his life, and that sounds so nice, but I'm going to go in a little bit in depth with that. I shared this with some students this week at Harrisburg Christian School, and I talked about how even when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, right, and he is, he's talking to the Lord, and he's saying, if there's an 
any, if there's any other way. He knew what the cross was going to look like. He knew what the torture was going to look like. He did nothing wrong, but he knew what that road and what that path was going to look like. So he's having this conversation with his father. If, if there's any other way. He's struggling, his humanity, his physical, he's struggling with this, guys. But then he says, not my will, mm, but your will be done. And then what he endured, he was beaten. I mean, beaten to the place that they said that Jesus would have been, ir we would not have been able to recognize him. Even how they whipped him, it wasn't just a regular whip. There was um, parts of leather that was attached with crushed rocks and glass. So every time that they whipped him, they then had to pull his flesh back out. Over and over and over and over again to the point where most likely the people who were beating him got tired and had to take a break. That's Jesus. That's the sacrifice. That's the sacrifice that he made for all of us to say, I love you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I won't turn my back on you because I gave my life for you. That's Jesus. And if you don't know him today, I urge you, there's going to be a time after, after I get done speaking that you'll be able to do that. And if you're joining us online and you don't know him, reach out to our online host. They will pray for you because Jesus is in the saving business. So when you're in this relationship with Jesus, you get this power, you get this ability that you didn't have before. So when I was talking about you have to think right your belief system, again, it's not positive thinking, it's about powerful thinking. And even how you look at your situation, your perspective, it says you're walking through valley situations. This is what I really want you to get to, is this. Whether he takes you out of the valley situation or whether he's with you in the valley situation, you're still a winner. Sometimes we think if God doesn't remove us from the valley situation, and then we have a hard time. In our mind, we're like, well, God, you're supposed to move this out of the way. You're supposed to take this. I'm not supposed to experience this. I'm a believer. But the Lord is saying, I'm going to be with you even in the valley situations. Here's the thing. People say, I want to be an overcomer. We got some great worship songs out there about being, you know, overcomers and champions. But here's the thing. You want to be an overcomer? You got to overcome something. <laughs> Let's just be honest. So be careful when you be like, I want to be a champion. I'm overcoming. What you're saying is, God, give me an obstacle. <laughs> give me an obstacle, Lord. I'm praying. So when you're jumping up and down, that's what you're saying. Now, I want you to do that. So, Christina, we still need to sing that song. I love that song. But that's what, that's what we're saying. Right? You can't have a testimony if you don't got a test. You don't have nothing to share. So every valley situation that you walk through, have proper perspective. Think right about it. Know that God says, I'm always going to be there for you. I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. But sometimes there are situations we will have to go through. There are sometimes that we can call it, when, you know, and, you know, people could name it and claim it. I'm very careful with that. There are some things that you can say, God, help me, and he'll remove some situations. He will. But there are times, is there anybody in the house that says that you've asked God to remove something, and he's like, no, you're going to walk through it. Anyone? <laughs> Amen. You're going to walk through it. Here's a good one for you. Now, hold on. Stop rebuking what God has put in your life to grow you. Stop rebuking things in your life that God has actually allowed to grow you. Sometimes we're asking God, let it go. Oh, let it go, let it go, right? Yeah, Madison, she was getting ready to sing it for me. Yes, yes. We're saying that, let it go, let it go. And God's like, no, let it grow you. Grow in this. 
in the darkest, deepest places, that's where you find your strength. That's when you get secure in God because you get rooted. And when you're rooted, when a seed is planted in the ground, it's dark. It's in isolation. It's alone. And sometimes your situation, your valley situation can be that way. But God is saying, grow there. Don't wait until you get the mountain experience to say, oh, God, this is great. This is great. No, grow even in your valley situation. So you have to think right. Be faith-focused, not fear-focused. The next one is talk right. This is your confession. So a powerful belief system, so that's what we were talking about earlier, a powerful belief system. A powerful belief system leads to powerful confessions. Then a powerful confession leads to a powerful life. So a powerful belief system leads to powerful confessions. Powerful confessions leads to a powerful life. Stop talking about your past. I know, that's a hard one. Don't allow your past to be the main topic in your future conversations. Who are you giving glory to? Past mistakes, past relationships? It's okay to talk about things in the context of what God has done, but you better be really careful that you don't just keep rehearsing the past over and over and over again. Don't let it be the main topic of your future conversations. But be courageous in what you say. Be courageous in what you speak. And use the word of God. When you say, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to say, go to the word of God. We have no excuse. We have so many apps and so many resources that we can use that actually can help us. So if you're having fear about a certain issue, you just need to type in, Google will help you out. Just type in, I have fear of this. It'll give you a whole bunch of scriptures. Be careful with what you say. Negative talking comes before um, negative thinking. The last one I want to talk about is walk right. So I said, think right, talk right, this one's walk right. Again, a powerful belief system leads to powerful confessions. Powerful confessions leads to a powerful life. This is something that I believe that we should all get. We need to make sure that our lifestyle screams, thank you, Jesus. Our lifestyle should line up with the word of God. And for some of us, you're like, well, I, I, you know, I, I think I'm doing it right. I go to church on Sundays, right? I come, I'm here on time. Some of you, maybe not, right? I'm watching on time. I'm, 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 I'm on time. You know, I do these things. I have this like Christian list. These are the things that make me a good Christian, good member of society. I don't get in trouble. You know, I even cut my neighbor's grass from time to time. But what's in your heart? Right? What's in your heart? And remember I said there's things that we need to confront. Those are when we need to look and say, God, am I walking according to the way that you want me to walk? Am I living a life that says thank you for the sacrifice? Am I living a life that says that I honor and remember everything that you've done for me? God, does my life scream, thank you, Jesus. Those are the things that we have to do. Again, we have to first, we have to think right. We have to talk right. And we have to walk right. So you may say, well, Pastor Lakita, you all know what I'm going through. But how many of you all know we all going through something? We all are going through something. Whether it's physically, whether it's mentally, whether, whether it's emotionally, or, or whether it's deciding um, maybe to start a business, maybe it's, it's deciding to start a new venture, we're all being faced with fear in some type of way. I will tell you about this time last year, um, I was at a conference and I had a prophetic word and the word was to start this nonprofit and there was all these things that... I was given in this word and I remember getting it and there were some timelines that were associated with it and I got it and I'm like, 
Oh my goodness. You know, when you get a powerful word, I am very cautious now. I used to be like, yay. Now I'm like, okay, Lord, what does this mean? Right? What are the next steps that I need to take? What's the action? How am I now responsible? For so you are accountable when you get a prophetic word, you're accountable for that word to, to see it come to pass, but to make sure that you're lined up with God to see it come to pass. And so um, when I got back to my hotel room that night, I sent it to some, to some great friends and I was like, this was a word that came, right? When I got back home, I started confessing that word, right? Believing it, right? Fear was in front of me though. Fear said, you can't do it. You're not going to be successful. What experience do you have? Right? And all of these sound like we would say, well, that's reason. That's what we call it. Well, that's reason. Right? No, what it was was fear and it was doubt. Because I had the choice. Am I going to believe God? Or am I going to believe an illusion? God? Illusion. And so what I decided to do after I started confessing it, I was believing it, I was confessing it, and then I started walking in it because um, even in the word, it was like people are going to be available, resources are, resources are going to be available. And guess what? It all was, and it got done in record time. But here's the thing. If I would have allowed that fear to stay face to face, there wouldn't be a woman of purpose. If I would not have allowed that, if I would have allowed that fear to continue to come at me, I wouldn't be helping to mentor other leaders. So whatever God has placed in your life for you to do, guess what? Get moving and start doing it. No excuses. And I'll tell you something. If you ever tell me that you have a dream, probably you don't want to tell me. Because I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to be like, okay, so what is step number one? This is step number two because we're going to get it done. Because again, we don't have time to waste, guys. We don't have time to waste. And I don't want to get to heaven. And the Lord was like, you had this all. I gave this all to you. I gave you the resources. I gave you the time. I gave you the people. And you did not use it. Come on, we're we going to do better. Today, I truly believe, some of you may say, I'm on the verge, I'm going to ask the, um, the worship team to come up. Some of you are probably saying, I am on the verge of a breakdown. This, this I mean, Pastor Keita, some of this fear that I'm going through, this situation, this is how I've always lived, right? And so you may feel like you're on the verge of a breakdown. And I declare, though, that today is a day of breakthrough, And I loved how Christina said earlier in that song that there was this heavenly transfer. And that's that transfer. Breakthrough, breakdown. Breakthrough, breakdown. Right? That's what God wants to do today. So I'm going to ask you all to, to stand. Who wants a breakthrough in their life today? Uh, I don't feel like you want it. Does it sound like they want it? Who wants a breakthrough today? Yes. And if you're joining us online, I want you to celebrate too. You get breakthrough too. And here's what I'm believing. Everyone who is watching, you're standing in proxy for someone. So maybe it's everything's good with you. And, you know, high five to you if you're good. But maybe you know someone who is on a verge of a breakdown and they need a breakthrough. They're face to face with fear constantly. We are going to pray for them. But we're going to sing in a moment. And I want you to know this. Remember I said earlier, the tactic or the lie that the enemy uses the most is that God's not for you. God doesn't care about you. I need you to cement this in your mind right now that that is a lie from the enemy. We will evict that thought today because what I want you to do right now, as we're singing this song, I want you to remember, you don't even have to go back far. In the last year, I want you to think about everything that God has done for you. 
For some of you, like for me, it's not hard for me because the first thing I say is this, he saved me and he forgave me of my sins. If that's all you got, whoo, that's enough to be thankful for. But I know in every single one of your lives that God has been faithful in some situations. He has been faithful in your relationships. He's been faithful just with people you know. And I want us to cement that right now. So as we sing this song, I want you to remember the faithfulness of God. Amen. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, try bones up. to success. God, I thank you that even though we walk through the valley, God, that you are with us. We're never going to be alone. We're never going to be isolated. You, we are engulfed in your presence and in your love. So today I declare, I'm going to ask you to put your hands on your heart. Today I declare that we receive that anew today. That we evict every single lie that says that you're not for us. We evict every single lie that says that you will leave us alone. We evict every single lie that says we will not make it. And we cast it out in the name of Jesus and we send it to the place that it belongs to and that's straight to hell. That's where it belongs. What we receive in its place, what we receive in its place is your love. What we receive in its place is your grace. It's your protection. It's your safety. It's your provision. It is your stability, emotional stability. It's healing. So God, what we get in return is more than enough. You will not leave us empty. You will not leave us alone. So today we receive everything that you have for us and we tell fear, no, not today. And it's not even not today. You don't get the opportunity to fill us anymore. We will be filled with the faith and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So God, we declare today, September 27th, 1041 a.m. is our time of breakthrough. We declare, God, that you break through in our families in the name of Jesus. We declare that you break through in our marriages in the name of Jesus. We declare that you break through in our children's lives, children that aren't saved. We declare in the name of Jesus, prodigals will come. We declare for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I declare breakthrough in our finances in the name of Jesus. I declare debts got to go in Jesus' name. I declare strategies for getting out of debt. I declare in the name of Jesus, breakthrough in our country in Jesus' name. I declare break, breakthrough with, with all of our leaders, God, in just our political realm, in our states, 
in our local government. We declare breakthrough. We declare we will see your victory come in Jesus' mighty name. So God, the sacrifice that you made for us was more than enough to do this. So we take your word every single day and we use it. It's our weapon and it's our guide. God, and I declare we will think right. <laughs> we will talk right and we will walk right. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. powerful. Um, if you need prayer for any reason, please let us know in the chat. Uh, if you need salvation or you need a personal relationship with Jesus, please let us know that in the chat. We've got people standing by wanting to pray with you and, uh, and uh, lead you down the path that will get you ever closer to Jesus. Um, I Normally we, we ask for takeaways, but I'm what I'm going to ask you is I want you to watch this again this week. Uh, absorb what she is saying because sometimes once is not enough. We need to hear it over and over again. So I'm asking you to watch it again. Listen to it again. Let it uh, feed your spirit. Um, anyways, I got some announcements here. Randy Clark is here next week. Uh, so please join us. Randy's always good. Um, the online giving, I, you know, we need giving. And so please, please continue to give and uh, help us continue this ministry. And uh, this is also, uh, our next Sunday is the, also the last Sunday that you can sign up for baptism. So if you want to be baptized, please sign up. And even if you're online, please email me and uh, we'll figure out some way of doing a baptism even for you. Um, whether it's in your bathtub or whatever, uh, no matter where you're at in the world, we can figure something out. Uh, the Holy Spirit has a way. So uh, you can go to our webpage, uh, ChristCC.org, and under events, there's a baptism link, and you'll see uh, online, there's my, ad, my email address that you can get in contact with us. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Please, Watch it again and let God fill your spirit with this message. No fear. Let faith and love replace that. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.